Edna Isora, spinal anesthesia is a first choice for nearly all ASA3 and ASA4 patients who do not have contraindications for spinal. While general anesthesia can always be used, the intraoperative course is much more stable with spinal anesthesia and requires less invasive monitoring with low doses particularly isobotic spinal anesthesia. So in this video, I will take you through the anesthesia management of a septic patient with an infected knee prosthesis who is scheduled for removal of the prosthesis. As you will see in the video, these patients are often very ill, have fever and difficulty breathing. In the video, I will take you through the performance of a femoral nerve block for patient positioning and for postoperative analgesia and through spinal anesthesia in the lateral position using a pyramidal approach and 10 milligrams of isobaric pipivacaine, 0.5%, which results in over three hours of anesthesia. The use of both spinal anesthesia and ephemeral nerve block helps manage perioperative stability and pain, which is crucial in such critically ill patients. However, the key to the success here is the technical ability to perform spinal anesthesia properly, which does require adequate training and adherence to practice standards with regards to the choice and a dose of local anesthetic. typical situation, a patient that is really sick, septic actually, and difficulty breathing, infection of the knee. And uh, the decision making here, whether we do a general anesthesia or a spinal anesthesia, if you see the patient's breathing pattern, you will know that placing this patient to sleep would be crime against humanity, okay? Because you would have a ventilatory dependency in situations that is a lot worse than it is right now. So we're going to do a femoral nerve block single shot, place the patient in the lateral position, and the single injection spinal anesthetic is all that is needed. There we go. So the femoral nerve block goes in. You see a nice anatomy of the femoral nerve there. Let's briefly review the femoral anatomy. So that's the femoral artery, and here is the femoral nerve. The fascia is over the nerve. So oftentimes the practitioners do make a mistake, mistake in this for a femoral nerve, which is the basically a fat pad lateral to the femoral artery, but that's the femoral nerve. So keep that in mind as we go through the video. Underneath the fascia. No twitch. There we go, we can see how the femoral nerve is being peeled off. Let's see what happens after the injection of the local anesthetic. Here you can see the needle. Here you can see also how the local anesthetic injection pushes the femoral nerve down. So when you see the femoral nerve being moved with the local anesthetic, displaced, that indicates a proper injection of the local anesthetic in the proper anatomical space. But there will be substantial benefit to the pain relief after the knees open for the septic arthritis after the only replacement. Again, always monitoring injection pressure and any motor response to nerve stimulation. Okay. femoral artery and the femoral nerve right there. So anesthetic underneath the fascia ridge. Okay. Good. There we go. Next comes the positioning for the spinal. In most of these patients we will perform a paramedial lateral approach to the spinal technique using L4, L5 or L5, S1 as the largest interspace. So let's take a look at this. That's the midline. This will be about a line that passes through 
L4, L5 or L5, S1, just below the iliac crest. And what you want to do is insert the needle two centimeter lateral to the midline and two centimeter codad with a slight needle orientation towards the midline and cephalad. We're going to do a paramedial approach to spinal anesthesia, certainly not an easy back. That's why we want to first review the anatomy with one of our trainees. So let's talk about this. So the patient is in this position. So what we want to find is iliac crest. Okay, we're going to go slightly codad, aiming for either L5, S1 or L4, L5 space paramedial. So once we hit the bone, if we do, we walk off the bone, redirect and walk into the subarachnoid space. Because the landmarks are here tough. Okay, this is what I feel is in the space. Okay. You feel it in 0.5%. Yes. Great. We're going to leave her on her back, on her side for about two, three minutes for the sp spinal to fix. And once we have that, then we will have a complete hemodynamic stability. And that was it. So what we have done is basically we located the midline at about L5 S1 or L4 L5, we will never know. We went slightly paramedially and basically just walked off the lamina to get into the intrathecal space. Now we're gonna position the patient who is completely now pain-free, analgesic, in the supine position again. And again, if we were to do this on the general anesthesia, the troubles would just start beginning with the induction intubation dealing with hypertension and post-operative management for pain, as well as weaning of the ventilatory management. That's really where spinal anesthesia um, wins over general with sick patients. Here we go. This is what it took. It took only 25 milligrams of propofol for sedation. That is it. And ephemeral block. So that's really the difference between what we're doing here, as opposed to uh, Newman's study, where the patients may have been put to sleep altogether, just for a spinal anesthesia induction. Okay, we'll see how this goes in the operating room. Here we go, the operation is all finished. And again, it's a totally different picture. Comfortable patient, no pain whatsoever. As you can see, this technique results in a remarkable hemodynamic stability, which is why we prefer spinal anesthetic in all patients that are ill, having lower extremity surgery, and do not have contraindication for spinal anesthesia. Ready to be transferred for recovery to the recovery room. Okay, that was it. No waking up, there's no winging off anesthesia machine or ventilator. Ready to go. As soon as the operation is finished, we're ready to roll. Talking about time efficiency. Thank you for watching this video. The ability to perform spinal anesthesia in ill patients provides a huge perioperative advantage. However, just like with general anesthesia, overdosing the spinal anesthetic to make sure it works can result in intraoperative hypotension, need for vasopressors, which can eliminate the simplicity of the low dose spinal anesthesia. I invite you to share your comments and feedback on the video. And if you like our content here, be sure to subscribe to our channel and never miss the future videos. Until next time.